to me. And, I mean, I know it's like really, really a long shot that I would get Ebola from something like that, but <clears throat> and that's the thing. People are panicking about it. Like it's like a huge number of people who've died in America from Ebola. We've had one person die die in America, one. And we've got two people sick, I think, right now. And so it's really ludicrous for people to be in a panic about it. But of course, nobody wants to get Ebola. There's no really not really a cure for it. And there's a vaccine, but they don't they haven't made enough of it because they're fucking stupid in the CDC. And well, not really. It's not the CDC's fault. The CDC's budget was cut by forty three million dollars this this last year by Congress. The Republican controlled part of Congress did it, and that's why they didn't have the money to actually have enough of these things and enough of uh, Ebola vaccine, which is a rare thing in America anyway. Never has happened before. But they could have made more. They could have had more money to do these things if they had, had, had the budget cut. And that's why when you vote for people, people, you got to pay attention to what they've done in the past and what they haven't because it fucking matters. Um, what else is on here? I have this one pumpkin friend. He's really well-spoken. He's one of the good gourds, <laughs> says Sarah Benincasa. She's hilarious. I interviewed her uh, actually three years ago, four years ago. For her book, Agora Fabulous, it's a really good book. Check it out, by the way, if you haven't read it. Um, it's about her fact, her her bout with agoraphobia, a severe agoraphobia, where she couldn't even leave her house because she was so agoraphobic. If you don't know what that means, by the way, it means of like a fear of crowds or a fear of people in general or being out in public or whatever. And so she uh, she wrote a book about it and, and her experience while she was you know living in her house and not going anywhere and afraid to go anywhere. It's really interesting. It's funny the way she. She wrote about it. So check that out. Um, U.S. four European countries call for an end to violence in Libya. Big whoop. Airstrike kills eight in ISIS. Big whoop. The families and commercials for bounty paper towels are the messiest motherfuckers on the planet. <laughs> That's funny if you think about it, how messy these people are. Because they have to make a mess in order to exhibit how the fucking product works. They are always really fucking messy. That's very true. That's funny. Um, Apple this week came out with a new OS. I've had it for about two months because I was a beta tester for it. So I already knew about it, but I like it a lot. If you haven't installed it, definitely install it. It's really much nicer. I don't know if anybody watches the show. It's called um, The People's Couch. You know, I've talked about it before, I think, um, on the show. You know, it's a show where you watch other people watch TV sounds boring as hell, but it's so fucking hilarious because they watch these every episode. They watch different types of shows, different shows like, you know, it's on Bravo. So they watch some Bravo shows, but they watch shows from all over like HBO, Showtime, NBC, ABC, CBS, I mean, all over TV. And, um, their reactions and stuff are always hilarious. These people's reactions and they're just so funny. And there's some gay guys, a group of gay guys, one group, group of older ladies, you know, like your grandmother's ages or whatever. There's a group, a black family, there's a white family and then there's like um, somebody's missing. Oh, there's a lesbian, lesbian, uh, lesbian and her best friend who's straight who watch it as well. And so um, it's just it's so fucking funny. And but so check it out if you haven't seen it. It's called The People's Couch. But there's this one guy on there. His name is Scott Nevins. He's one of the gay guys on there. A gorgeous man. I checked him out. He's really done a lot of work in uh, Hollywood. He's done a lot of, uh, for charity and for other things like that. Um, and it's funny cause you see somebody and he's not okay looking, I guess he's good looking, but I'm just saying he's not like, you know, I don't know. He's, he's a nice looking guy. Um, but he, um, you look at somebody and you think, Oh, this person's a vapid, superficial and stupid, but actually he's done a lot for, for charity and everything else. So you can't really, you can't really judge a book by its cover. If you ask me, Sarah Benincasa asked, do any black folks have any questions that I can answer specifically related to the historical tensions between whites and pumpkins? Oh my God. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. This is Brain Purge. This is Brain Purge. You're listening to Brain Purge. So what else do we have? I know these young white people in New Hampshire seem like thugs, but in reality, they just need church. Pumpkin church. <laughs> She's so stupid, I swear. Oh, my God. Okay, let's, let me skip all that now. Let me go back to Facebook real quick before I leave and see, make sure there's nothing else I missed. Um, Why am I not seeing... Um, for some reason, I'm not seeing my feed. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Okay, there's a sign on here. It says, no soliciting. We are too broke to buy anything. We know who we are voting for. We have found Jesus. Seriously, unless you're giving away beer, please go away. 
you know, people who come to your door like that, you know, I've had Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons both come to my door. And I, unfortunately, every time they come to my door, I'm never here. It's always Michael, my husband, who answers the door or whatever. And I never, I never get the opportunity to do it. I, first of all, I never answer the door anyway. Unless I'm expecting somebody, I don't answer the door. So I'm like, even if I'm home and somebody's knocking at my door, I don't answer it because I'm, I don't know you. <laughs> who the fuck are you? So I look on the camera and see who it is. Oh, nope, don't know you. So bye bye. And people feel like they have to answer the door because someone's knocking on it or ringing in the do- ringing in the doorbell because they feel it's it's impolite or something. Fuck that. You have a right to be impolite in your own house. You didn't invite somebody to your house, especially some salesperson or whatever. So you have a right to be rude. Don't feel afraid to do that. And I always say, don't open a door for anybody you don't know. Don't, don't, you know, don't any of you ever watch like the fucking. Um, CSI shows and shit like that. That's how people get killed and shot or or raped or whatever. So, you know, no thank you. No thank you. So I, I never opened the door. I forgot what I was going to say, though. I had a point to make, and I don't remember, remember what it was. Oh, Mormons and shit. Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, so I keep wishing that they one day would come to the door, and I would actually be home and actually for some reason open the door and talk to them and tell them, you know, that they're fucking morons and idiots and why and what they believe is fucking bullshit and so forth. Because honestly, it's like, you know, Mormon, you know, how do you tell people that what they believe is just bullshit? I mean, I just tell them because it is, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, there's no proof that the things that they believe in is true. There's no, there's no proof or hard evidence or anything. Oh, Hey, JD productions. I didn't see you in there. Thanks for listening to the show. This is my brain bird show. I don't really say anything or talk about much. I just kind of fucking ramble on. So if you get bored, I'm, I will understand if you leave. <laughs> um, should invite the Kardashians. No, I don't think so. The Kardashians, speaking of the Kardashians, you know, I've never been into them. I have never been into them at all. I've never found them intriguing or interesting or anything. I just find them to be stupid, vapid individuals who, I, I don't know. I just don't find them to be, have any real redeeming qualities or anything, you know? So I don't really listen to their show. I don't, I've never ever once seen their show. Uh, keeping up with the Kardashians or whatever. Never. I don't follow what happens with Kanye and Kim. So the fact they got married, obviously and have a kid, but I mean, I, I don't know. I just don't watch them and she and her fucking big butt, you know, <laughs> now is her butt for real or is her butt padded? I don't understand. I don't really don't understand if her butt is real or not. I mean, it looks way too big to be real, but you never know. I mean, she may have had a lot of, chicken or something, a fried chicken. I don't know, but I've never actually, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If I were straight, I don't think I'd be into big butts like that. Like as a gay guy, I I love like bubble butts on a guy, but that's hot to me. Bubble butt is hot, you know, or muscular butt or bubble butt or whatever. Um, just round. Yes. That's, that definitely turns me on. I'm definitely an ass guy for sure. That's one of the body parts I like anyway. Um, so, so I get that. I guess it's the same for straight guys with like big butts on women, I guess. I don't know, but that is just like way too big. It's like she, she literally her butt, when she sits down, it like protrudes out of her behind. It's like almost, almost like a fucking shelf. It's like crazy. So I don't know. I just think that's ridiculousness. JD Production says, I always say that is an interesting position you have, but I disagree. Well, you're much more polite than I am, JD Productions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call you JP, by the way. Um, yeah, she ain't got nothing on Nicki Minaj, that's for sure. Um, I, I, you're just a nicer person than I am, I guess, because I, I, if I disagree with someone, I tell them exactly what I think. I mean, I don't have to be rude about it, unless I just want to be. I don't have to be rude about it. Um, I, I can be polite and still disagree and tell them why I disagree and tell them why what they think is wrong or Ill- illogical or whatever. And for me, that's the biggest part of it, is the logic. It's like, people... I mean, I don't know. I guess people... Some people just value logic and other people don't. And I'm someone who definitely is pretty logical. I'm very emotional at the same time, so I'm kind of a dichotomy in a way. But I definitely think logically through things a lot of times, especially when it comes to religion or politics or anything, like or civil liberties and so on. So if it's illogical to me, uh, it doesn't make sense. It's not a valid position to me. So if someone tells me, you know the earth is flat because that's what they were told by a book and God told them so. 
I'm like, no, it's obviously round because we have satellite photographs of it. We know it's round. We know we go, you know, we can go all the way around the world on a boat or a plane. Hello. So my point is that, you know, if it's illogical, it's really difficult for me to, to respect somebody if their position doesn't make sense logically to me. Um, speaking purely on emotional, and this is coming from someone who's highly emotional, highly sensitive, you know, speaking from a purely emotional standpoint doesn't really hold a lot of uh, validity for me personally when you're debating somebody on a topic. It has to come from a logical standpoint. And I think that's the way the law is built. So the law is built that way, dispassionate from emotion and so forth. And 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 um, that's the way politics is supposed to be and so forth. So so I don't I, I think that's why that's why, you know, most people when they think emotionally about things only or think about things because that's how they were taught or what they were told or how they were raised, that's when you get into a problem. And that includes religion. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in religion, period. I think religion is, is, is stupid. <laughs> I think religion doesn't make any sense. I understand some people... Well, this is what I guess I should say. I think people should probably um, differentiate between religion itself the organized you know organized religion itself and the fellowship that people feel or the community people get uh as being part of um an organized religion you know i understand the felt the feeling of fellowship the feeling of of wanting to belong and the feeling of being around people who believe the same thing and da, 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 da. That's fine. And, and being coming together and sharing thoughts and all that stuff, I'm all for that, whether it's about, you know, religion or, or politics or whatever, that's great. But the problem is, is that the religion, the things that they're discussing, the things that they believe in, that is what I have an issue with, not the fact that they want to have an organization, you know, it's the fact that the religion itself is abhorrent to me, is a cancer in society, is ridiculous, and it does, is, as I said, illogical. Um, he's JP saying something. He says, the thing is, as soon as you upset or offend the person you're having an argument with, you've lost any chance of changing their mind. I find the best way to convince someone of anything is to find the middle ground and make it an idiot. Think it was their idea. Of course that doesn't work with everyone. And at some point calling them a dumbass is the only option left. <laughs> yes. Well, and I get that. I get that approach. And I, and you know, I understand that approach and I could use that approach myself. I've, you know, been able to do that for a long time, but I don't do that. I'm a very polarizing personality. I've always been that way. It's not a, an act. It's not something I choose to be. I just am very black and white about most things. I and mean, there's a large gray area about some things, of course, but generally speaking, most things I'm pretty black and white about. Like, for example, civil rights, civil, right, civil liberties for, for gay people, for black people, for Hispanic people, for anybody, women, whatever. There is no middle ground for me. You're either for them or you're against them. So you're either believe in everyone should have equality or they don't. And so if you're, if you're him and Han about it and like, no, well, but in these situations, no, fuck you. No, everybody deserves equality. Everyone's a human being of equal value. No one's better than another person intrinsically. Everyone is created equal. I believe that with my full being, not just because it's in our constitution as a human, you know, humanist or whatever you want to call me, I believe that to be the truth. And so, and not only do I know that's the truth, believe that's the truth. I know it's the truth because everybody who is created is created and they're shaped by their environment. They're shaped by their, at their um, decisions they make, et cetera. So everyone has an opportunity in life, but um, to say that not everyone deserves to be equal. It's just fucking bullshit. I'm sorry. No, I don't think so. So things like that, like women should make less money than men. Fuck you. Women should make the same amount of money as men for the same job that they often do just as well or better than men do. Fuck you for paying women less because they're women because they don't have a penis. Fuck you for um, not allowing gay people to get married in your state because you disagree with it. Fuck you for um, putting more blacks in prison because they're black, because you were discriminating against them. Fuck you for not allowing illegal immigrants to act who actually 
support part of our fucking economy to have amnesty. You know, fuck these people. I don't agree with these things. And I don't disagree with them because of my own personal opinion only. I disagree with them because it's unfair, because it's inequitable, and because it's illogical, as I was saying before. 